Forever writes, What's the one thing you keep in your scrap stuff and never use? Mine is raw chipboard. I even have chipboard from a long time ago. I need to use some of it. Glitter Girl, can you help Pink Forever take on the challenge of the chipboard? Of course I can. Let's take a look quickly at some various different kinds of chipboard we have in the store at Two Peas. And they, the chipboard comes in both plain or raw chipboard or printed. So um, this kind of unfinished that looks just plain is plain or raw chipboard. And then there are kinds that come with a printed design on it. Um, so these are some different sets from Studio Calico, the die cut tags, the buttons, and the butterflies. But you can see that even if one side is printed or colored, the other side will be plain or raw. So even if the shape you want is in the wrong color, the wrong pattern, you can still customize it and make it um, work with what you want to use. So there are those different options. American Crafts always also do some that come in boxes like this. We also have brands that come on a sheet where the chipboard is already sticky, like Basic Gray or um, uh, October Afternoon chipboard comes that way in various different brands. Maya Road do lots of different chipboard pieces. I just have this one particular one to hand to show, but they do all different sorts and um, different sizes, different patterns, and all sorts of things like that. But Maya Road chipboard is all the plain finish. And Jenny Bolin has these sets. I'm going to use this one today. These are the flag banner chipboard pieces. And th there are various other kinds that you can find. These house shapes, hearts and butterflies. I use these two sets an awful lot and right now they're out of stock in the shop today but if you click that little notify or request and notify me then if you want those they'll come you'll get an email as soon as you um, as soon as they're back in stock and then I wanted to show you these two which are a little preview because these are in the brand new release they've not yet hit stores yet and um, so that's the plain chipboard buttons and then the little index tab which is perfect for going um, with photos and and little bits and pieces in pockets or at the edge of your journaling, all sorts of things like that. And it matches up with the punch. And um, so you can punch your paper and put it on here really easily without having to do any cutting. Anyway, so those are coming soon. Um, but today we're going to use this set of flag banners and I'm going to alter them in all sorts of different ways. And then you can pick and choose the techniques that work best for you. The first way to add color to chipboard is really simple. That's acrylic paint. So I'm just going to use this Jenny Bolin um, for Ranger Paint Dabber. This is in chewing gum, which is a nice happy pink. And you can just use the dabber end if you like. This one's getting down to the bottom of the pot, so I like to shake it up and then use a paintbrush. I just find the paintbrush is easier to control anyway, so I don't tend to use the paint dabber all that much. but certainly one of the simplest ways to add color. A little hint, if you want to do something that's really pastel in shade and will be hard to cover the chipboard color, you can paint a layer of white acrylic and then paint your color over the top in the second coat just like you would prime a wall if it had another color. So there's first option and I'll just leave that to dry and that's pink paint. You can also just spray on the paint and not need to worry about a, um, a brush or any other mess. So I'm going to try a couple of these in different colors. This is Tinsel by October Afternoon in the Sprinklers range. And that's from their Christmas collection, but it's just a lovely gray shade. So I know I'm adding gray to something that's kind of gray anyway but it will give it a bit of a um, more purposeful gray shade. So that one is kind of a silvery. The Christmas um, sprinklers have just a little bit of glimmer in them. So it's a nice pewtery type silver. And I'll do one in pink as well. And this is with um, the chalkboard glimmer mists, which are a little bit more opaque. But I wanted to show you this because, see, the gray takes the color really, really easily. The pink, I'm having to spray a lot before I actually get the chipboard looking pink. But what I would do is just leave this to dry a little bit 
and then come back and add a little bit more. But with the with the mists, the trick is to use a mist that has a bit of opacity to it. If you just use the sheer shimmer, you're always going to get the chipboard color coming through. And if that's the look you want, then that's perfect. But if you're trying to get the color that's in the bottle, you're only going to get that if it's an opaque mist. So something that has um, that has a bit more paint-like quality to it rather than just that sheer ink. Things that are not just sprays and mists and dyes. Let's get into some different textures. First thing on my list then would be something sparkly. So we can start with a few different ways to use glitter. With glitter, you always want to have a separate sheet so you'll be able to pour the glitter back into the jar and just try and contain it. Glitter is it's impossible to contain it. If you're going to work with loose glitter, you're going to get glitter around. It's going to be on your face. It's going to be on your hands. Um, so if that's not something you like, then this is not the technique for you. But if you don't mind that, we can give it a try. And there are different ways you can get the glitter to stick to your chipboard. One way that I find quite effective is this super tacky type of tape, the kind that comes with a red sheet, which makes it it just kind of denotes that it's stickier than the kind that comes with white paper. And then the trick is to separate that sheet from the top. And then we can pour on the glitter. It's handy if you have some tweezers to work with the tacky tape and small pieces as well, but I don't mind getting a little messy. So just pour it on. And then there's two reasons for having a, a crease in this sheet. And one is so that it's easy to funnel back into the jar, but the other is so you can press it down and make sure that that glitter is really burnished into the adhesive so that it's not just sitting there loosely on top. So here's my chipboard with the glitter. And what I tend to do is turn it around and Flick it a few times to get all those pieces that are just loose and that are really going to go all over the place to get those um, detached straight away. And then you can just funnel it all back in. And this is from the new um, American Crafts glitter collection called Wow. It comes in various different fine um, fine to chunky. So this is extra fine. And then it goes right the way up to a chunky glitter, which is more like, um, this is more like an art glitter, the extra fine. And the chunky is more like a, a craft glitter like you would use in school perhaps, but nicer because the colors are really, really bright and vibrant. Um, so these are coming to the store very soon because they've just been released by American Crafts, so they're not quite shipped yet, but they will be here soon. If you want a different texture to this, you can start with this sort of layer and then coat it with something that will keep the glitter intact and give you a glossy finish over the top. So you can apply um, glossy accents or another liquid, um, a lacquer type adhesive. So something that goes on very clear and liquidy and then you need to leave it to dry for quite a long time and it will seal it. Or you can apply clear embossing powder over the top like an um, ultra thick embossing powder or just a regular clear embossing powder and heat emboss over the top and that will seal the glitter into another layer. So it just depends on if you want kind of a lacquered look or if you'd like the plain um, un uncovered glitter that gives that different texture on top. There's another way to add glitter, which is by using stickles, which is basically glitter glue. So you can use this on raw or on painted chipboard. So here's one that I've painted pink. And I just paint it onto the top and then take my paintbrush, or you can do it with your fingertip if you don't mind getting glitter everywhere. And spread out all the glitter. Now it will have a less sparkly finish until the glue is dry. Do be careful that you don't end up with too much glue on the, the edges that can distort the shape. But 
It won't be as sparkly as the one that we completely covered in glitter. It will be a little more subtle than that. But once it's dry, it will have it the it will have a, a bright sparkle to it. That sort of um, whiteness to the to the glue will go away and be clear. So another way, let's use some embossing powder. So these look the same as the glitters, but this is the American Craft Zing, which is an embossing powder. And what you need to do is cover the chipboard piece with something that's sticky. So you want an embossing ink pad. So this is a Versamark stamp pad. There are all different kinds of brands of um, embossing pads. Basically, you, you don't really, you're not worried about color. So if you're using, um, you can use a regular ink pad that has color if the embossing powder is going to cover it, just depending on what color you want. But a clear embossing pad is quite useful because then you can just use it for every color and not worry about it. But that makes it sticky enough to hold the um, the embossing granules. You don't have to burnish this like you do glitter because we're going to melt it. You just want to dislodge any kind of completely extra pieces. I'll pour that back into my pot. And then I use a heat gun to melt the embossing powder. And once that's cooled enough that I can touch it, I can then just leave it with one coat, which will give a slightly bumpy effect. If you want it to be completely plain, let this cool, put another layer of embossing um, ink and then embossing powder on it, melt it again, and it will go very, very glossy without any bumps. Okay, so with all of those different ways that are kind of messy and involve heat or spraying or painting, let's look at a few ways that are a lot less messy. Um, one that's very, very simple is that all the Jenny Bolin chipboard shapes match up with Jenny Bolin's um, stickers. So I can add the date to one of my chipboard pieces just by peeling and sticking the sticker and adding it to the sheet and then you can distress the edges you can leave them plain but basically it will take that sticker and, and make it solidly raised up from the page for a different um, a different level in the embellishment and those come in different patterns or how about some tape I've been using a little bit of tape almost every week might as well give it a try here so I'll show you two different chipboard pieces with the tape because there are clear tapes and they're solid tapes. So this is with the American Crafts, no, sorry, this is not American Crafts, the other one is. This is KI Memories, and this is in their new um, Valentine-themed collection called Hot Date. And it comes in a pack of three, one white print, one black print, and one pink print. And you can just line up the tape So then the white of the tape shows up as a really quite subtle pattern on top of the raw chipboard. You could, of course, paint this first if you want another color underneath the white. Or this one is American Crafts. This is um, some American Crafts washi tape, but we have all different brands of washi tape in the store. Just do a search for washi tape and you'll find all sorts of colors and patterns if you haven't checked that out yet. And this you can just wrap around the edges. And this you don't need any color underneath because it's going to give it the entire color of the tape. So that's not a problem. And because washi tape is just kind of semi-transparent, I can see the pattern here of the chipboard, which makes it really easy 
to come back in and trim off the extra. And perhaps I shouldn't do it so quickly and rip the tape, but you won't do that because you'll be perfect. Plus, if I do, if you do, look, 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 it's really easy to take it off and do it again. Washi tape is very forgiving in that way, so we can just add, I can just add another layer. There we go, okay. So you can cover with tape. Now, of course, if you put these two ideas together, you've got stickers that were made this shape, you've got tape that you're adapting to this shape. You could take any stickers, layer them over, turn the, the chipboard over, and cut off the extra. So don't, be, don't feel like you have to have washi tape to do that technique or that you have to have those specific stickers. Any stickers in your collection can be stuck to the chipboard and cut to fit. So just look at any little bits and pieces or patterns or colors that you like and see if there's anything flexible there. With the same very tacky tape that I've used um, before with the glitter, I can add other things like fabric scraps. So I've just pulled the backing off the tape and then I'm going to press this down onto fabric. And I'll cut around just to get it off the fabric sheet first. And then I'll go back and cut closer to the edges. So let's take some of those chipboard pieces and make a layout today. So just choose whatever techniques you want to use and whatever works with the supplies you have on hand. And this week I'm going to dive right into this brand new collection that we've just gotten into the store. It's by American Crafts and it's the Dear Lizzie Neapolitan Collection. It's very um, washed out colors but not overly sickly sweet pastels or anything like that. So um, some aqua, some peach and red and pink nice greens in there. So just give you a quick little look through this in case you haven't seen it. I just have a couple of the embellishments. don't have those yet. I have the sticker book. These are always my my favorites. I keep picking this sticker up and wanting to use it and then deciding I'm not ready to use it and putting it back. But I, it will get stuck to a layout very, very soon. So that's the sticker booklet. And then of course the papers. flip through. There's even some vellum in there. So yeah, very, um, very spring into summer watercolors, lots of things like that. And two cut apart sheets that, well, they could be used as full sheets or cut apart. So this one that looks like all different little Polaroids and Another one that I've used part of, <laughs> I've used these pieces, but there are other boxes here, but both of them have a, a full sheet on the back if you don't want the cut apart but would prefer the other bits. So I've pulled out my favorites today. I'm, this is my absolute, absolute, absolute favorite. I'm going to use this as the background. It's called Happy Horizon and it's a chevron that's in white and wood grain. Oh, be still my heart. Okay, so I'm going to cut the backing bit or the, the branding strip off this. It has a little ice cream cone, so I can save that for later. So with my background paper ready to go, I'm starting with two four by six photos, which I've put together and matted on a pink and green floral from the same collection so that this one is ready to go. And then I've just started to add a little bit of embellishment that's going to go up here in the corner. Instead of cutting the Polaroids into separate pieces, I just picked three in a row and then cut them out as a strip. So it's a little bit like a strip from a photo booth slash Polaroid. So kind of mixing that idea. And I want to stack these little papers up um, kind of looking a little bit like streamers. So I've cut, just hand cut a strip of the vellum and I'm going to go back to that same piece that I matted here and turn it over and just find a little bit here that I can hand cut as well. To have another little layer. To give this a little bit of definition, these color the colors are very washed or, or pale and just to make sure that they have a little bit of definition just add a little bit of black ink but a very 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 little so it just comes up as a bit of a gray rather than a heavy black border. I want to 
overlap these and I'll put this in place and with that done I really want to focus on the couple not um, the background so I'm just going to cover up a little bit there and I can use the chevron to get things in line so I know they're straight and this piece I don't want particularly straight, so that's okay at a nice little angle there. Then I'll start looking for other places that I can add in things. So I wondered about having something that would be um, a little bit of a border piece here. So I think this sticker, I don't want to use the whole sheet, so what I'll do is turn this so that the, the line that I've cut the straight side comes up to the top of the page and then the nice tidy circular bit that's cut from the edge on the sticker sheet and that I still get that I don't want to cut that side just layering up those pieces and then I also of course want to put in my chipboard so I have kind of lined them up in an order that I thought looked like it had some potential but it's not completely blocked in or anything and this should give me enough to put some up here and perhaps some down here with the journaling the title so that I can stretch the embellishment from one side of <coughs> sorry one side of the photos to the other so I have a mix of um, I've got the fabric the glitter the tape the embossing powder and the other one that I did was the same pa pattern paper and I've just used my normal adhesive on the chipboard cut the pattern paper to fit and then filed the edges and added a tiny little bit of ink and the reason I file the edges of chipboard um, or file the edges of paper on chipboard is because it then bonds the paper into that adhesive and it will make um, the paper look like it's meant to be that size rather than you just cut it to fit. So just go around with a nail file and it will press the paper into the chipboard for a nice cohesive look that's um, smooth around the edges. So what I want to do is try looking for places where I can add in my chipboard banner. Once I've figured out the placement and I've just adhered these a little bit so that I could see where they're going to go, I want to add some twine behind them So the majority of the embellishment of the layout comes from repeating that same technique in two areas. So I've just added the five flags up here with the twine underneath on top of all those layers of paper. I repeated the same process on the other side at the diagonal. So there are the same layers of paper underneath, that border sticker, and then more of the little chipboard flags with the baker's twine. Then there's room for my title and my journaling to finish the page. To finish it off, I stayed with the Dear Lizzie supplies, so I've added um, the thickers. This is the white puffy mat, um, so it's got kind of a, not a shiny, it's puffy and it's plastic, but it's not the shiny puffy stickers like um, we're used to. And the Scrabble stickers that are flat and then the smaller mini letters. And one thing I really like about this alphabet I just wanted to show you is that these initial letters, they fit over the square letters really, really well. So if you have a title that has two words and can end in a letter that has a nice bit of flourish to it, they'll overlap really prettily. And, and then added my journaling at the bottom in the little space created there from the subtitle letters and the embellishment there. And that's everything finished. So super, super fast. I spent most of the time just just using um, all those different techniques on the chipboard. So once you have a stack of little chipboard pieces ready to go, then go ahead and make a layout and I'd love for you to share it with us at Two Peas in a Bucket. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.